Coming in at number five, we've got Caver. I have a very clear memory of first coming across this page. It leaves such a wild impression, it's hard to explain. Most of this Angel Fire site consists of text on a black background, which really doesn't sound too creepy, but can be really off-putting if you're reading through it in the dead of night. The website is a blog written by Ted, detailing his caving experience back in the early 2000s. Caving is another word for spelunking or potholing, depending on where you come from, which is the recreational pastime of exploring wild cave systems. Usually this means heading to a remote location and squeezing your way into pitch black passages and wriggling your way through unfamiliar territory. I don't know if I get it. So apparently Ted and his buddies found a new entrance to a cave network and wanted to find a way in. The things cavers do for a thrill, I will never understand. The stories Ted tells are terrifying, as most of this seems pretty dangerous and reckless, and if you've got claustrophobia, this story will just about make you implode. He details his attempts to crawl through a bunch of passages barely wide enough for a human body with no guarantee that there's another side to pop out on. At points, he's completely immobile, save for a bit of room to move his hands or feet. Why? His text-based tale is accompanied by some early digital images, which look about as pleasant as being stuffed into the trunk of a small car. There's one of just his head and that's all you can see is his head, and the rest of him is crammed into a tunnel, and I can honestly say I get chills every time I look at it. Eventually, Ted comes across some hieroglyphics of sorts, which is weird because supposedly nobody had accessed this cave system before, and he promises to explore further and update the readers as he discovers more. However, after promising more and leaving readers on a bit of a cliffhanger, Ted mysteriously stopped uploading. The last post was made in May of 2001, and he hasn't been heard from since. And because these posts were made in an era where the internet was a little more anonymous, it's unlikely that Ted will be tracked down. Did he find himself in an inescapable position? Did he discover something he'd maybe rather forget? Or maybe he found himself between a rock and a hard place. Coming in at number four, we've got the simulation argument. Do you ever feel like the world we live in doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to? Notice any cracks in the facade? Maybe a pair of twins that look too similar? Or a woman in a red dress who just keeps walking by? If you've ever thought that we might be living in a simulation, then this is the site for you. And if you think it's totally crazy, the time and effort people put into finding plausible evidence might cause you to reconsider that position a little bit. The simulation argument is a website that compiles all sorts of academic research papers, theories, and data pointing towards the fact that we're all living in a simulation. It's constantly updated with new information and analysis with all sorts of different views on the subject. Sure, it might seem a little far-fetched, but it's just another way to look at the world, right? And if you look long enough and find yourself making similar conclusions as the person running the site, where do you go from there? The whole world is a lie, how do you continue living your life? Are your choices different now? Do you try to break free? Can humans evolve past our current state? I'm not gonna tell you how to think about this hypothesis, but I will encourage you to give it a good old fashioned think and see where you land. Maybe you'll come out the other side knowing Kung Fu. Coming at number two, we've got the Dianea House. What begins as two friends exchanging correspondence in response to some upsetting news quickly devolves into an insane, twisty, turny, eldritch horror story about a house that may or may not exist. It's pretty cool. This collection of blogs and emails and other assorted posts was uploaded by Eric Heiserer, well known for writing the screenplays for The Modern, Nightmare on Elm Street, and The Thing. At one point, there was an actual website where updates would be posted, but now you've gotta go and find an archive to get the full experience. The tale is well worth the read, though, with an assortment of truly haunting twists and turns. Reading it now, it feels just as real as it did back then. This is an example of how a creepypasta can go above and beyond, both in terms of content and structure. All sorts of extra details are embedded throughout, and they take you to different websites, news clippings, blog posts, and more. It's immersive and spine tingling. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I'd think these events might have actually happened. The name of the house is a little on the nose though. Look it up, it's quite clever. And finally, scooping in at number one, we've got white enamel. Speaking of immersive experiences, white enamel puts you in the shoes of someone exploring an abandoned hospital in the best possible way or worse, depending on how scared you get. The site is a sprawling point-and-click adventure taking you through the Glenfield State Psychiatric Hospital. While that might sound sort of dry, it is anything but. The experience is chock full of creepy archival footage, disturbing and disquieting sounds, and songs from the area in which the hospital operated. The whole thing feels sort of like I Spy on PC, but way creepier, and it's browser-based. There are six episodes to play through, taking you through various wings of the institution and providing you with information related to its storied history. I don't want to tell you too much, because it's something best experienced blind. However, it only works on desktop computers, so make sure you head in prepared. At number four, rate my poo. Yeah, this is an actual site. Just save yourself from the grossness and do not go on this site. Trust me, you don't want to go to that side of the internet. It's a very scary place. So this site is just what the name suggests. People go to the site, post pictures of their poo, and then other people view those pictures and rate them. And then to top that all off, people tell you what they believe your poo is trying to say to you. It's just something you should go your whole life without looking at. Number five on this list is Ghost Island of Japan. 
The ghost island of Japan is what people have been calling Hashima Island. Now we've talked a bit about Hashima Island on this channel before because Hashima Island is one of the most haunted islands on the planet. The Little House of Horrors says the buildings were built by Korean and Chinese prisoners who were forced to work here from 1930 to just after World War II. The conditions of these forced laborers were hard and some never made it back home. The people who worked here named the island Jail Island or even Hell Island. After the war, the Japanese came to the island to work here themselves. The island population had its peak population in 1959. More than 5,000 people worked and lived on Hashima Island. And because the island wasn't very big, this meant they had 5 feet living space each. In 1974, the mines started to run out of coal and people left the island. Soon, the island's uninhabited parts were reclaimed by nature. The weather conditions started affecting the concrete and buildings started falling apart. Sometimes people camped out here, but that was a very dangerous thing to do. The government wanted to discourage people from going over on their own and therefore decided to open it to the public. Fishermen who sail near the island claim they have seen strange flickering lights in the buildings even though the island has no electricity. Strange noises have been heard and cold spots have been felt. People say they had the sensation of being watched and there are some claims of people that have been touched by unseen hands. So clearly this island is housing some type of evil there. It's rumored that the people who died deep within the mines, their spirits are still there and have even taken to a few of the corpses that were left behind. Evil dead humans running around and ghosts of all types, not the sort of island you'd want to see. Well, that's exactly what the Ghost Island of Japan lets you do. You can basically scroll through the entire island looking through the abandoned buildings and broken infrastructure. The website itself is super creepy and what you're looking at is even more so. Some people who have studied these Google Earth photos have claimed that they've seen spirits in them. I'd say go check it out for yourself, but that would mean you have to go visit the website and I really don't think that doing that is the best idea. Number 4 on this list is the Nightmare Machine. I made the mistake of visiting this website when researching for this video and I honestly thoroughly regret it at this point. Alvaro Trigo says, The Nightmare Machine scary website features horrific images generated by artificial intelligence. Although these images aren't real, as they're generated by AI, they often resemble real objects, places, or anything that you can relate to. This one-page website issues a warning to all visitors immediately when they land on the website, preparing them for what is to come when navigating through their page. That warning says, warning. Images on this website are generated by deep learning algorithms and may not be suitable for all users. They contain scary content. And that content is assuredly scary, as witnessed by me. The scariest part about this website is that it's all real things. I saw the algorithm take the Colosseum in Rome and turn it into this dark and evil environment that looked extremely apocalyptic. I also saw them generate faces of humans and turn these into these grotesque Trevor Henderson looking creatures. And I think maybe the worst part about this site, and what really gets me, is the fact that it's a robot making these creations. I've always been rather scared and very cognizant of the fact that artificial intelligence and robots could one day take over the planet. They could get smarter than us humans and enslave us and make us work for them. Seeing this AI draw out these grotesque, disfigured human faces just got me thinking about the type of things that robots could do to us. This AI is trained to create scary looking things. If this AI ever grew to like making scary looking things, then we could be in trouble. Number 3 on this list is Fright Find. Fright Find is a really good name for the website because that's basically what you'll be doing on it. Finding Fright. The whole premise of this website is to bring you closer to ghosts and hauntings. Actually, the small little about us section of their website says, Fright Find brings you closer to the paranormal by finding and reviewing the scariest haunted houses, fear attractions, and haunted hotels near you. If you want to catch a thrill or experience a real haunted place, then we can get you there. Let's say that you move to a nice neighborhood in California. 
It's the suburbs and everything is pretty picturesque. Your neighbors are nice, you get a paper delivered to the front door, there's a park in the middle of the subdivision with a field where the kids all play. When it's summertime, there are birds chirping, the hum of lawnmowers going, and the sound of an ice cream truck patrolling the area. You think it's perfect, right up until you check Fright Find. Turns out, that nice neighbor who keeps inviting you over for a barbecue two doors down, well the house that guy lives in is deeply haunted. A murder took place there, and now a demon resides in the house and is said to take people's souls straight to hell. Now I'm making all of this up right now, but I think you get the idea. Fright Find allows you to locate all of the haunted houses around you, and it tells you what happened there and what type of ghost or entity is haunting them now. Some of these homes you may have heard of before, but a lot of them you haven't, and they could be right next to you. Knowledge truly is power, guys, but also sometimes, ignorance is bliss. Number two on this list is Homicide Monitor. I understand the purpose of this website, like, I do get it, but it really is scary. Alvaro Trigo says, Homicide Monitor is one of the scariest and most dangerous websites ever created. This creepy website features a map showing all murder cases happening on Earth. It provides visitors scary information which often varies yearly about homicide incidents that occurred in recent times. It also includes a drop down menu where you can choose any nation to know the exact murder cases that occurred there. So again, this makes sense, I get it. It's kind of important information to know where there are a lot of murders taking place. Like maybe I want to book a vacation, but I check this thing first just to be safe. Also, just in terms of being at home too, this could be a good information tool. But there's also the other side to all of this where I check it, and then I realize that a murder is being investigated just down the street from where I live. Like how is that going to make me feel? Once again, I want to reiterate that it's good information to have, and if there is a killer on the loose, then I probably want to know so I can protect myself. It's just really creepy regardless. Checking this website can be very eye-opening, which can be a good thing, but just be aware that it comes at a cost. And finally, number one on this list is Plane Crash Info. Do not go onto this website, guys. Like, seriously, I'm kind of shocked this thing hasn't been taken down, because it really isn't cool. Moodswag says, This website is ironically owned by an organization called Perfect Privacy LLC. It has MP3 transcriptions of passengers crying and panicking moments before their planes crash. It's really dark stuff to say the least. The website also has a list of accident photos, unusual accidents, famous deaths, and, and more. This website will definitely take you on a ride of dark, creepy stories. There are some things that just need to be left alone, and the audio recording of a plane going down, that's one of them. I understand that this media needs to be investigated and looked into after the crash has occurred to understand why the crash happened in the first place. But once that investigation is concluded, that's it. There is no need to be looking into stuff after that's done in my opinion. I didn't end up going to this website to research this video, I just read up on it from other people who have visited it. I really don't think that there's any good reason to be going to a thing like this, and frankly, I don't even think it should be a thing. Number 5 on this list is Fixed Match Buy-In. Fixed Match Buy-In is a way for people who visit this site to bet on sports matches around the globe that are actually fixed and their outcome has been previously determined. Maybe for some of you this isn't scary, but for me, a guy who literally runs his own YouTube channel slash podcast about the Toronto Blue Jays baseball team, my channel's called Blue Jays Today, feel free to check it out, just a mildly shameless plug. But anyways, for me and for sports fans in general, this is some pretty serious stuff. For the longest time, fixed sports games have been something that the public has speculated upon. The authorities who run said sports games have vehemently denied such allegations, but this fixed match buy-in proves that these allegations are real. The Thought Catalog says that the FMBI fixes matches with at least a 2 to 1 payout. It also requires a $20,000 minimum buy-in with 50% of your winnings going toward the site's service fees, though after the fixed match, the $20,000 buy-in is then returned to your Bitcoin account and everyone wins except for the athletes. Although FMBI 
website cannot prove its authenticity as doing so would require to reveal transaction details or match information that could jeopardize their network. They claim to be quite busy with weekly matches in several different sports. They say that they're involved in multiple sports, but the one that has the most potential is probably European football. For the longest time, people have believed that the league owners have a say in how things play out and who comes out on top. The nature of the sport makes it one of the easiest ones to tamper with considering how subjective penalties are and that most matches are usually decided by a single goal. As a sports fan, I hate the thought that matches might be fixed, but based on this, might have to come to terms with it. Also, side note, but comment down below if you guys are a sports fan and the team that you support. Would love to hear. Number four on this list is cheap swatting service. Swatting, according to Thought Catalog, is the act of obtaining a victim's IP address and then anonymously and falsely reporting a critical incident such as a bomb threat or hostage situation to that location. The SWAT team then arrives on scene, kicks down a few doors, and generally disrupts everyone's day while costing taxpayers thousands of dollars, and it's huge on YouTube right now. Though the affected have extended all the way to politicians and pop stars, most instigators and victims are gamers who get attacked as a result of a bitter online rivalry. Swatting is also a service that you can buy on the deep web through cheap swatting service. CSS offers three options for the customer. $5 for a mild situation, $10 for a little worse where they'll bring many people and raid them, and then $20 for the SWAT team to come and they can just do anything. Despite penalties of up to 25 years to life, stiff sentences for the convicted have done little to curb this growing trend. This is because SWATters are able to keep risks and subsequently service prices low by relying on simple and difficult to trace methods of police contact. Disposable phones, phone number encryption, and internet call services such as Skype have all proven cheap and invaluable tools for the common swatter. I want to just emphasize what they said about the $20 option there, folks. They can do anything. A SWAT team will literally show up to your home, and if they perceive a threat, you could actually be killed. Any number of things could go wrong with this whole scenario. Not to mention that this is a horrible allocation of resources and if an incident occurred where we actually did need the SWAT team while someone was SWATting, then whoever actually needs them is gonna be in serious trouble. This is also the perfect way to frame someone for a crime if you ever did wanna do such a thing. Plant some evidence and then call the SWAT team in and bam, they're done. This is way too much power for a standard person to have and seems like a really dangerous way to spend 20 bucks. Number three on this list is Atlantic Carding. The Thought Catalog writes, once again, roughly 11 million Americans fall victim to credit card theft each year. Atlantic Card isn't helping. AC is a service that sells credit card information, addresses, and social security numbers. The more money you're willing to spend, the better your info. Big spenders can even get access to business accounts and infinite credit cards with no limit. Price ranges between $5 and $80 depending on the depth of information sold. It's reasonable pricing for the potential destruction of a stranger's life. The site boasts a credit card validity rate upward of 95%, anonymous communication via PGP encryption, and untraceable Bitcoin transaction. But keep in mind, if something looks too good to be true, it probably is. Agencies have been known to stage sting operations on the deep web with fake sites such as 2010's Carter Profit. It's that easy guys. Just drop a few bucks and with that you can steal someone's identity and their credit card and put them in really serious debt. I'm so ignorant in regards to credit card theft and hacking and all the ins and outs of how it works and I think that honestly makes this a little bit scarier. Like the fact that there's just a whole site where you can buy someone's card for $80 seems kind of ridiculous. What if we get unlucky and the card that they buy happens to be you or me? Granted, they probably look at mine and think to themselves why they'd want such a sad looking thing, but that is a complete total other story. Just be aware that somebody is just a click away from stealing your entire identity and totally altering your whole life. Number two on this list is the cookbook. During my research of the dark web, there were several stories about one site in particular that is especially gruesome and disgusting. It's a site dedicated to cooking, however it doesn't use your conventional ingredients. Rather than how to cook a quality pork roast or a good steak, this site specifically looks on how to cook one thing. Women. Yeah, that's right guys, this site is 100% dedicated to cooking females. 
Metro writes, The most disturbing site we found was a comprehensive guide for cooking women. We're not talking about a short joke here. This page had information on what body types to use for specific cuts, how to prepare these cuts, and how to cook the girl so she lives as long as possible. Now I haven't actually seen exactly what this site is and I'm honestly glad I haven't witnessed it in person because this is just next levels of sadistic stuff right here. We're talking about a full on website that resembles something run by the Food Network except for humans. On this site it said that you can find close to 100 different recipes. I think the scariest part about this is that it isn't a joke site either. This is a fully real site that takes itself seriously. And if the owners of this site take it seriously then it also means that there are users who take it seriously and probably follow said recipes on a regular basis. It almost seems too sick and twisted to be real but I'm sad to report that this is an actual thing that you could discover on the dark web. And finally number one on this list is Red Rooms. This entry is truly just so sick, guys. Science and Technology writes, Red Rooms can be essentially classified as video portals. They are hidden pages in which the viewer can watch live a torture of a person and participate in such torture by contributing with ideas or requests. Depending on the money you pay, you can participate to a greater or lesser extent. Payment is made by using cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin to guarantee anonymity and avoid problems. This is honestly horrible, but the sad thing is, this is kind of a tame definition of what actually goes on there. Murder, taking one's own life, horrific sexual things have all been set to go down on this dark portal of the internet. Nowadays, it's even been utilized by some organizations where they'll perform executions on there. Now, there are some beliefs that these red rooms are just an internet hoax and they don't actually exist. And frankly, I hope that that's the case, but there have been a lot of stories of people stumbling upon them and witnessing firsthand the type of horrific stuff that goes on. This is a horrible part of the internet and something that I hope that you never need to discover for yourself.